Hey guys, grab your popcorn. We're going to graph a rational function. Okay. All right. When we graph these, well, first of all, actually, I just wanted to give you kind of an idea of what these graphs look like. Okay. This is obviously just a couple examples, not all of them, but this is just kind of an idea of what you're looking for. Okay. So when we graph these, we follow a few steps and I bet you're excited to see what they are. Here they are. Okay. The first thing we're going to do is factor. Then we're going to find our asymptotes and check for holes, find our X and Y intercepts, and then we are going to figure out the general shape of our graph using our preferred method, which we'll talk about once we get there. Okay. All right. So first I'm going to factor. Okay. If you need a factoring review, I will link one in the corner for you, but I already went and factored this for you. The top stays the same and the bottom will be X minus four times X plus two. Okay. Look, we're already factored. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is find my asymptotes and check for holes. Okay. First of all, a hole occurs when you have something in the top and the bottom that cancel. Okay. So pretend when I had factored this, that this had been X minus one instead of four. Okay. Then these two would cancel, right? That's when you have a hole. So in this example, we don't have any I will link a video in the corner where we do have one if you want to see that. Okay. But for this example, there are no holes. Okay. My vertical asymptotes have to do with zeros. Okay. If you've been doing math for any amount of time, which you probably have been, you probably remember that we do not mess with zeros in denominators. Not today, right? We just don't even deal with them. So vertical asymptotes are formed where the denominator could be equal to zero. Okay. So to find it, I'm going to set each of these equal to zero. Okay. So X minus four equals zero and X plus two equals zero. This one, I'd add four to both sides, get X equals four, subtract two from both sides and get X equals negative two. Okay. So this one, I happen to have two vertical asymptotes. Lucky us, right? X equals four and x equals negative two. Now, how I represent that on my graph is with a dotted line. Okay, so at x equals four. And just so you know, if you graph these on your graphing calculator or something, um, you may not actually see a dotted line on that graph. That's just how we like to show it when we do it by hand but you'll just notice that in that area, the graph does not touch. Okay. But it gets closer and closer and closer to it. Okay. All right. Here's my other one at X equals negative two. Okay. My graph will not cross those lines. If you end up with your graph crossing there, go back and check your map. There must be a miscalculation somewhere. Okay. All right. Next, we're going to look at our horizontal and slant asymptotes. You will not have both of these, okay? For these ones, we follow some rules. Yes, we love it when math gives us rules. Just so you know, these rules did not just come out of thin air. There's a reason for them, and I'll link a video in the corner explaining them if you'd like to watch that, you know, if, if that just floats your boat, okay? All right, when we are looking for these, we are noticing degrees, which has to do with our exponents, right? The highest exponent on the top and the bottom. Okay. So down here, my highest exponent is two right up here. If you're like, Oh, there's no exponents. Remember, this is really X to the first, right? So my highest exponent on top is a one. Okay. If your top degree is greater than the bottom, you don't have a horizontal asymptote. You check for a slant. If they're equal, you divide your leading coefficients. If the top is less than the bottom, then your horizontal asymptote is Y equals zero. So that is what we are dealing with, right? Our top degree is less than the bottom. So our horizontal asymptote is Y equals zero. Okay. Again, I represent that with a dotted line, which is kind of hard to see when it's along the X axis, but we know it's there, right? I'll kind of have it go on top a little so you can see it. Okay. But um, a major side note to know about horizontal and slant asymptotes is guys, they can actually be crossed. Okay. And I know what you might be thinking because I thought it too. 
Why do we have them if they can be crossed? That's dumb. Okay, I hear ya because I thought it too. But they still help us understand the shape of our graph and help us know what areas our graph goes towards. And as you graph these more, you'll probably start to understand, oh, I get why that's there. Okay. So even though horizontal and flat ones can be crossed, they still matter. Okay. All right. Because I had a horizontal asymptote, there is no slant asymptote. All right. Look at us just trucking along. We're already to our intercepts. Okay. So we are going to find our x intercepts. You could have more than one. You could have zero, actually, but it helps us know something about our graph. So my x intercept, to find that, I'm going to set y equal to zero. Okay. So I'm going to have zero equals, I could write it either way. It doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to have x minus one over x minus four times x plus two. Okay. Now I don't want to work with this fraction, right? So I would get rid of the denominator. Oh, I feel like I didn't write that very neatly. Pretend like I wrote that really neatly. I would multiply this side by the X minus four over X plus two, right? Cause then my denominators cancel. But if I multiply one side, I got to multiply the other side. So I'd multiply this side by it too, but guess what? It's just a zero. So I end up with zero equals X minus one. Ah, oh, that was nice, right? So then I add one to both sides and I end up with X equals one, okay? But this is not a line like these, right? This is an ordered pair. When I plugged in zero for Y, I got one for X, okay? So that is my X intercept. Like I said, sometimes you have more than one, but in this one, we just have one. Okay, also, guess what? Look at that. We're crossing our horizontal asymptote. <clears throat> it's okay. It can happen. Oh, man. <coughs> I'm going to need a drink after that gasp. Okay. Um, we crossed that horizontal asymptote, but it's okay. If we cross the vertical, that's not okay. We must have done something wrong. Horizontal, we're okay. All right. Next thing I'm going to find is my Y intercept. Oh, that guy took up more space than normal. Okay. We're just going to do that. Okay. We're looking for our Y intercept now. So we're going to set X equal to zero, right? So I'm going to have Y equals, I'm going to use this one. It doesn't matter, but I'm going to have zero minus one over zero squared minus two times zero minus eight. Okay. So then on top, I'm just left with a negative one. Zero squared is zero. Negative two times zero is zero minus eight. So I'm just left with a negative eight on the bottom. Okay. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. So I end up with Y equals one eighth. Okay. I know it's a fraction, but it's all right. So when I plugged in zero for X, I got one eighth for Y and that is my Y intercept. Okay. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. But I'm just going to do a little above zero, right? For one eighth. So I know my graph crosses right there. Okay. From here, what do I do? <laughs> well, I need a graph represented on all of this except where my asymptotes are, right? Because I could plug in negative 100 for X and I would get a Y, right? I could plug in a number in the middle of here I for X and I'd get a Y. I could plug in a positive 50 for X and I'd get a Y. So I need a graph on all of these spots except where it would make my denominator zero which is where I used my asymptotes, right? Okay, so what I want to know is over here, does my graph go like this or does it go like this, right? So basically, because my horizontal asymptote is at zero, I just want to know, like, is are these numbers up here positive or negative, okay? So when I plug in a negative three, am I going to get a positive number or a negative number? And that'll tell me, which direction this graph is going to go on that side. Okay. So I'm going to pick negative 10. Okay. We're going to go a little crazy because we are going to do what's called sign analysis. If you haven't done this before, just hang with me. Okay. And if you don't like it, just plug in number numbers like normal. Okay. But the whole idea here is when I plug in negative 10, or negative six or negative 50. 
I don't really care what number I get. I care if it is positive or negative, okay? So let's go ahead and see what happens when I plug in a negative 10 here, okay? So when I plug in negative 10, I would get negative 10 minus one, which would be a negative number, right? And then on bottom, I would have negative 10 minus four, which would be a negative number, negative 10 plus two, which would be a negative number, okay? So on top, I've got a negative. On bottom, I've got a negative times a negative, which is positive. A negative divided by a positive is negative, okay? If you're like, that was nuts, I didn't like it, go ahead and plug in the number and figure out what the actual negative number is, okay? But for my purposes right now, I just care that it's negative, okay? That this, this side of the graph is approaching this vertical asymptote in the negative, okay? So that tells me at negative 10, I don't know the exact number, but I know it's negative, okay? And I know it's negative somewhere. And I also know that I already found the x-intercept, right? So if at negative 10, I'm negative down here, I know my graph isn't going to cross the x-axis again because I already found my x-intercept. So if it's negative here, it's going to approach that vertical asymptote and continue to go negative, okay? Like I said, if you don't like this, go ahead and pick a point, plug it in, get the actual number if that makes you feel better. That's kind of why I said your preferred method. If you want to find the points, you go for it. Okay, <laughs> just knowing what we know about functions and about these graphs, we can kind of do it a bit more quickly. But if you don't like that, go ahead and plug in the points, okay? All right, from here, okay, I know, again, that this is the only place my graph crosses the x-axis, and I know that my graph needs to approach these um, asymptotes, okay? Now, since I have this y-intercept here, that tells me that my graph is going up in this direction, right? I know it doesn't come back down because I don't have another x-intercept, right? But from here, I don't know, is it gonna go up and be kind of like a parabola or is it going to go down, right? In these graphs I showed you earlier, we have examples of both. We have this one that goes down, right? And this one that goes up, okay? So from here to this asymptote, which way does it go? Well, again, I can use sign analysis. So I can use two or three. Let's just go ahead and use three. Again, I'm not so concerned about what the number is at three. I'm concerned of if it's positive or negative, right? So let's go ahead and see what happens. So when I plug in three, I get three minus one, which would be positive, okay? Three minus four, which would be negative three plus two, which would be positive, okay? So on top, I have a positive. On the bottom, I have a negative times a positive, which is negative. Positive divided by a negative, which is negative, okay? So when I plug in three, I don't know the exact number, but I know it's negative, okay? So I know that it is going to approach this vertical asymptote in the negative region, okay? Look at that cute little curvy graph. All right. So now I've got everywhere from negative infinity to this asymptote. I've got between the asymptotes. Now I need to know what happens over here, right? Again, I know it won't cross the x-axis again. So is it going to go like this or like this? You've got it. We're going to pick a number, figure out when we plug it in, if we get a positive or a negative. Okay. So let's plug in 10. Okay. When I plug in 10, I get 10 minus one, which would be positive, okay? 10 minus four, which would be positive. 10 plus two, which would be positive, okay? Now all those positives are going to end up being a positive, right? So when I plugged in 10, I don't know the exact number, but I know it's positive. So my graph is going to go something like that, okay? All right, the final step, optional, do it if you want, it's a good idea, is to go ahead and graph this on a graphing calculator and make sure that we were on the right track, right? Make sure that we had all of our 
ducks in a row, if you will, right? Make sure that we are doing good, okay? And if you graph it on a graphing calculator and you're off, go ahead and go back and see where you might have gotten off, okay? Hope this made sense. Thanks.